This conference will now be recorded. Mayor Roberts? Here. Commissioner Chair? Here. Here. Commissioner Andy? Here. Here. Commissioner Here. Here. Commissioner Here. 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 Us, but our, our city, and our county, and of course our, our country, and our world too. God, we just ask you have that wisdom upon all of the meetings that are going on across our uh, nation, and, and just help those that have that ability to make decisions that are good for all of us. My God, we just again thank you for this beautiful day. We ask that you supply rain when you see fit for us, God. It is a necessity in our being, our being our at this point. <coughs> Thank you, man. see to the commission mission tonight um, about some unexpected and large expenses of all kind of you know, required just over the last two weeks and mostly last week. Um, we're notified from the state EC that there uh, uh, is a $750,000 payment that will be due to them. That was for the uh, Big Og Industries 
uh, for the cheese plant project. They had sent to us um, in 2018, I believe it was, and being that that object that fell through, we now have to return those funds to state. They will be sending us an invoice for, for that. Um, they, they were also inquiring about it, an additional 100000 to dry land land through. I was actually minutes before being able to find where we had actually sent that money out to them. So uh, we will not owe that 100000 uh, but the, the 750 will will be available and, and it be paid during during the month of June. Um, in addition to that, um, I was I've been working with the NFA to try to get some answers on uh, questions from Daniel all the way up to April 28th that I had asked about particular the 5699 loan, which which was it's just just technical improvement. So I'm not sure exactly what the original purpose plan was for that one. Um, but we had borrowed money from, from the county state bank. And last year we had requested a, a deferral on payments for, for a period of time. We were denied on the deferral and we went into process with, with the NMA to brief refinance and, and pay that debt off. Um, that loan, loan, the finance loan closed on March 11th of 2022. Um, I was not given much time at all to review that, two days to review that and the new magistrate report. And um, notice when, when I was working, working actually budget numbers, uh, that are that our set payments from our gross receipts in income have gone up substantially during two months. Um, that those amounts were thirty-one thousand for for many months prior to that, and then in March and April, it rolled into one hundred twenty thousand and one hundred thirteen thousand. That was intercepted. Uh, again, again, I reached the NMFA with no uh, response. Uh, I got a response when I notified David and Monty with the state uh, taxation revenue department. Um, he sent me the intercept payments. Um, and I noticed that our intercept pay payments had gone up from the 31000 to about 41000 based based what the TRD, taxation revenue department, showed. Um, that still didn't explain the... the Anomaly for the 120 to two, or 120,000, So again, again, reaching out to the MFA. Um, finally, last last week, uh, was able to discuss it with her. She said, "Oh, we made a mistake. Look at this." Um, rather than come back and tell me that the mistake had been been that they taking too much from the intercepts, that they came back to let me know that. They had take, taken our first annual full payment within a month after we closed the loan, and that that is how it was outlined debt schedule, um, and that that was negotiated between us, the bond attorney, the NMFA, and our financial advisor. So I reached out to Brad with a sample, uh, our financial advisor, and asked why we would would have agreed to our first annual full payment and do. Basically, on the same scale that the Lee County State payment would have been due. Um, didn't get anywhere with that. I was just told that the Lee County State bank payment would have been 100, 190,000, and this was was 197,000. Um, MFA then, um, you know, was not interested in giving an explanation for why they had structured that way, and. I was just basically told that that was how it was because we would have had to pay the 190 and we actually saved money by only paying the one set of um, Issue being now, now they have to move some, some money around internally between funds because the intercept payment uh, was deducted from our revenue rather than Money that we had been putting away in a fund to make the payment to Lee County State Bank. So I, I am going to have to move some money around uh, to make that right, right our books. But um, 
you know, was it was it was the answer that I wanted wanted here? Uh, but we are caught up on that loan, and the new payment for that is seventeen thousand a month. So I I still haven't got got a, a straight answer from the MFA as to why they are going to collect, um, you know, monthly instead of annually with the the intercept payments. Um, I don't think that it was structured that way. That is not how it appears in the loan documents. It, it appears as, as an annual payment, um, but they are telling us that they're going to intercept month monthly at 17000 and that's what they have told the Department of Taxation and Revenue. So, um, you know, I, I have asked for, if that's the case, I've asked for an debt schedule um, to show the payments as, as monthly as opposed to the annual payment. Cause of confusion in the first place. Um, being the thing that that was, um, luckily during the months of, of, of March and April, all our groceries have been coming, coming up just a little bit. And so the prior month in February, we actually received seeds, seeds 97,000 in of grocery receipts that have after 31,000 intercept payment. Um, then the next day it dropped by a hundred thousand because of that large payment to five hundred ninety one. The following month five eighty five, and then the most recent month we're back to five ninety two, but we aren't going to be paying that large payment. So um, we could could add another uh, eight hundred thousand to that. So we should be getting back up to the close close to seven hundred thousand in the gross receipts on an annual. Or on a monthly basis. Um, Cut that with large expense items for year end. Um, the ladies actually had to do two check runs this last week. And, and uh, so between the due last week and then the one prior to that, we have expense, um, so operating expenses of 976000 that's versus uh, the gross receipts during the same period of time, the time of 592,000. So, so that's a shortage of 385,000 just in the month. What we on operational that we went um, over our income, over our revenue. Uh, pair that with the 400,000 that we ended up at the prior month that we were in the red on the budget, looking at the budget. We were 400,000 under her budget or, or above, but um, <coughs> before that, before June, before the mid month, and then June. Um, so we've actually doubled double our loss, lost 385,000 just a month because of all these unexpected uh, expenses toward the end of the year. Um, and I am still really working on. Actually, just, just just started last week. Started working on our fund, fund audits. Um, I have gotten through the. Um, I've gotten really through larger staff have that done done next by next week when we have the larger staff meeting. Um, I have gone through the Lita Lita fund. Um, so I've recorded all historical transactions going back back to 2015. I now have to, to compare that to. Uh, the expense report that Lynn provided by me, and um, then I will add in the distribution, the allocations for grocery seeds that, that we have not yet make, made that fund to, to come with a final final number of that final fund balance should be. Um, I have, have explained it a couple times, but I'll, I'll go ahead and, and explain it that we, we have a disconnect between what our fund balances are, the running totals. Um, our expenses are not tied to our liability account, and therefore or our bill sheet does show a completely different figure from what are in our funds. So what the expenses and revenues that have, that have been come going from our, our funds, they are not being reflected in the fund, fund balances. So, so our balance sheet is, is off. Um, that is one, one of the main reasons that, that the DA report was, were, were very difficult, difficult to do. Uh, those, by the way, are, are completely caught up. My, my co with the state DFA, 
um, did help helped me out during a really, really hectic time and um, got, the, got those caught up. Uh, I was struggling very much with how to um, um, reconcile those, those cash balances and things because our balance sheet being, being so far off of what expenses and revenue are, um, the adjustments were just incredibly hard, hard to make. Uh, I know that that's something that the CPA and the auditors were sure struggling to do when they were to work on the audit. Um, audit, by the way, is done. It, it's accepted as of today from the state auditor's office. They've also approved next year's year's contract, a three-year contract with uh, Willoughby, and so she's going to be finishing our third year. Um, that contract's approved. I had the mayor sign off on that prior to the meeting. So um, we are in March. Is that correct? Rec reconciliation. Um, Trey's been working on those. Are all the way up, way up to It's taking at least about a week, probably per. Um, like account or per month. I am talking to Lee, Lee County Bank about, about how to audit that process a little bit better so that it's not so tedious. We have we have a, a 80 to 100 page uh, bank or bank been every month every month. And so it does take take a, a very long time um, to go through and, and check those all off. So um, I know from my prior experience with banks that there are there are um, products out that can be used to make that process and it won't take so much time um, to do it manually and um, so all of those things things coupled together yeah. and kind of just came, came to fruition all at one time um, and so I did bring it to the mayor's attention last week because the concerning amount uh, come July 1st, we do plan to launch into next next year's bid. Um, we did come in above, uh, out, of, out of, you know, not red with that budget as far as an operating budget goes between the general, general fund and enterprise funds. So as long as we're tracking those expenses carefully over the next year, and paying the expenses over the year, um, then and I think we should be okay going forward. Um, but but like, like I said, there, there there are some expenses that the 750 50 was one we, we did a, a, a eventually have on the budget, but we decided to pull it out and then, then immediately or after they, they, they want that money. Uh, but that's gonna, gonna happen in budget year here, so it impacts this year's budget, so we won't have to do an adjustment on that, um, but that is where I'm at. Um, I, I need I probably about 15 to 20 funds that I'm going to have to do a, a really <clears throat> deep dive and try, try to determine what those fund values should be, and then I'm going to have to have to work with Tyler, our, our square company, to make sure that those um, Funds, well, the new funds that we're going to set up are going to tie correctly together there. so the asset set and liability account are tied to the expense and revenue accounts. Um, I know that that's been kind of a systemic issue. Uh, the auditor mentioned it and uh, I even found a letter in the files back there um, for a couple years ago where we had, we had asked CRI out of the calls to look into it to help straighten the accounts out. Um, the software company, they are supposed to be in rep tomorrow to, to speak with me. Um, and we are, are still trying to get that done by July 1st. So, so if they are coming up with a, a good solid timeline for me, as of tomorrow, then, then uh, we're probably going to go ahead and launch into it ourselves, set up the new funds, and then, and then we'll just then check to make sure that they're tied to, together appropriately so, so that we don't run into this, this issue going forward. They need to set up correctly, correctly so that it, there are accounting software will for us. Um, you know, this has been a suspicion of my mind for a time that. that that our balances were not correct, and um, I, ha I haven't been myself, myself otherwise. So, um, 
that's been my reservation in presenting ink statements or balance sheets or anything of the, of the such because I knew that, that they were accurate. And I'll try to answer any questions. So that's so that seven hundred fifty thousand, and then we have to pay who's in its own account. It's in it's it's in the fund. Um, it's not in an account because of our pooled accounting system. Um, there's just the, the client cash for the monies that are in the separate funds. Um, but <laughs> it will, when we do write the check to, to them, it will be coming out, out of an operating account that all of our checks are written from. Um, the only only accounts we have separately are some small vehicle accounts, corporate account, things like that. And those are um, that, that's set up that way, way because they actually actually did it. It's their portion of, say, a title or registration and for DMV or um, Certain court costs and such from the, the court. Um, we have some investment accounts at Estacado. Um, that is actually was set up for the drink, uh, the DW 2018. Um, that amount that we are past due, I had actually listed in the water fund for the next next year budget. Um, but then the, with the audit, the audit, found out that that is actually what, what that was when we set up along with NMFA, uh, uh, they offered us to have a reserve fund, and that was the original Western Commerce, Commerce it got, got us. It's moved to the staccato. Um, I'm still trying to get the, the signature cards and everything updated. They're being a little difficult with that, but, um, uh, the, the plan will be will to to actually liquidate those accounts to bring our DW 2018 there hasn't been a payment made in in a year on that fund uh, on that on that loan um, so we're about 190 something thousand past due on that on that loan um, but that won't come come from a operating account that's going to come from from the original intent which was the was the fund which is just open in Estacado. Uh, what one of our odd findings was that they were concerned about our securities and employees with that Estacado account. Um, being that it's a credit union, they're really not set up to be handling those kind of accounts. Uh, credit unions are, are, are for consumers, um, um, not for businesses or municipalities in this case. <laughs> Um, but rather than, than, than move that fund, um, we just felt like it would be best to use, use it for what's intended for and those accounts current um, and then pay the, the monthly payment out of, out of those accounts until such time that it's that it's went down to nothing and then we can close, close those accounts. Um, I think that, that would be best serve for everybody. I will have to explain why it got moved, which was one of the confusing things when I was trying to find the money um, of why it was, wasn't was commerce. Um, Western, Western couldn't tell me anything, of course, because I went on those accounts. And so I had a difficult time. Uh, but luckily, the auditors knew the history of that and knew where, where that had been moved. So, so bottom line, the, the $150,000 is there? It's in the fund, fund. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I got another question. Uh, you were saying our, you know, our payments are every 1,000, you know, up to 40, 1,000, is that the intercept payments? So, uh, yeah, intercept payments, the three payments that are on intercept are our fire truck, our fire station, and our capital improvements. That five six nine nine nine. So that's a new loan um, that was was with the county state bank was on annual payment and it's going to be on a, a monthly payment. So those are our three assets. Um, in addition to that, we have the DWW 2018, which is the one that has to that uh, at Zacato. Um, we also have the Magistrate Court loan that, that we closed in March. Um, at Magistrate Court and um, 
we will will know agreement on that. That was one that they sent us the invoice for twenty for twenty thousand and contacted them, and that was a mistake. Um, they were not supposed to have been, been invoicing us. They had capital and the interest to pay the in the interest the construction term. So once we have a tenant in a new magistrate court, that lease pay payment will be that payment. So it, it's kind of outside the the realm realm here. Um, and when you were saying with them taking out that lump sum, that two hundred and thirty, that was one hundred twenty. Mm -hmm. 1,000, 333 total. Uh, our payments have dropped to 1,700 or 17,000 now. Yes, now that they made their annual pay payment um, going forward to the 17 a month. Okay. So I'm just yeah. trying to figure and, out so that up to 41,000 are actually saving 24,000 a month, even though it was at a bad that they took all that money. money yeah, and we've looked at these debt schedules extensively. Um, um, they're not level amortizations, um, so the, the, the payments do go, go up and on quite drastically. Uh, but for the next year, and, and, and the number that I put on our budget, um, it's 14400 right, per, right. per month for the, the station, 9750 for the ladder truck, and, and 17,355 for the capital improvements. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk later. Okay, uh, we will get any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna have uh, a conversation on household receipts. Uh, and just for their, their knowledge, our needs knowledge, uh, the Jackson Avenue, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. I, uh, uh, in addition to, so that was another, and I have it right here. Um, the Jackson Avenue project is completed. Um, we, we do have to pay, pay the back on, on that. Um, right now it's, it's going to be close to 115,000 that we either are owed to Ramirez and Nuns for the um, mail and away. They have 15,000 in um, overages, cost overruns, um, and Crystal might be able to elaborate on, on that. But uh, uh, that plus, plus the, we have two small invoices still to Pettigrew uh, under $2,000. Um, so with those three, we do have to pay um, that out within the month. It has to go out, go out in June 30th for the EOT contract. Um, there, there is uh, there, there might be some adjustments made to that number based, based on the con contract was estimated in the project be 524. We came in under that, and so I believe we have to pay back what we don't use. Okay, so the 515 that we're at, at right now will be, um, there will be an additional amount out for what we did not use of the disbursement amount. Uh, we got 500,000 from the DOD, so that, so that was our 25% injection. So um, still just a little bit, a little bit of math to, to come in with final number, but, but that's an additional little over half half million is coming out of our operating account during this month. So um, yeah. As far as our uh, uh, knowledge of the next thing the debt scale. This is Ms. White Ms. White also brought up if you do the, do the math the debt schedule is that it's not not if you do on a house. It's not the same. Not every month. It varies, uh, and there's really no good reason that I see it. It is tied to bonds, obviously, because this month it may be be 180 thousand, and next month it may be 225, and then in next following month, month it may be 80. Every one of our debt schedules that. Yearly, you take it on an annualized basis. It's some different amount. 
So uh, if you try and try and multiply it, 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 it doesn't work work out. So, uh, <laughs> and it's been, been through uh, one of the fire station ones. Uh, it's an obvious one I've been pretty consumed uh, with. In that it started out about 200 and 40, I believe. And then uh, starting this year, for the next few years, there is about 7,107 uh, per year. And then after a number of years, it jumps up to, to 380 or 390 for the continuation all the way to the end of the term. So I don't know how they actually put the tables together either. So, so uh, when you try to annualize it, make sense of it, but you can't unless you look at forward. And that, and that was we've been through all of the <laughs> any, any other questions? Anything further? Uh, I, my last request would be if you could find some other secret funds and some other institutions that would be great. Okay. <laughs> Gee, do, you, do you have any goodies you would like to share with us tonight? <laughs> Very briefly, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, we're in the process of hiring two uncertified officers that, that were approved in next, next year's budget. Uh, they signed up to three-year contracts. They would not, not be certified until May of next year. <clears throat> As you know, the process takes, takes upwards of a year to make a certified police officer. Um, and, and that would bring us to 20, 20 officers out, out of 28 slots. So we're still, we're getting there. Slowly, slowly. And then the good news is we spent the last of our LEPF state funds. Um, we're we're going to buy a server for the police department. We've got the same one since, since 2015, which is dangerously close to the burning out. So, so that is state funded money. So we continue to, to invest in the personnel and our, and our infrastructure. That's all I have. Any questions? Party. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, so I've got a little bit more information, Chief Moran. So, so my EMS total runs for the month of May, we had two, 241 EMS runs, trans, transports to the hospital, 47 have been still transfers, seven airport transfers, uh, refusals, cancellations, cancellations, delays. we had 87, we had nine runs to Tatum, and we had 42 fire, fire calls. <clears throat> So we are, we are working right now for, for the positions that is on, on next year's budget. Um, we have advertised, advertised through the Worth Fire Academy, which graduated on June 7th, and the South Plains Kansas Community College Academy, Academy which graduated at the end of May, May since the 150 mile living restrictions. I had three graduates from the Wolf Worth Fire, Fire Academy interested in employment, and they are fire certified. certified. One of, one of them just to take his, his state license or his national registry, and he would be an intermediate as well. So I, I would not have to jump at all. And then we've got two that will will have their fire, fire cert. Only one of them so far has an application and resume. I've scheduled the inspections and the hydrant test on all the fire, fire hydrants in the city. I scheduled that with I split that with the water department and they haven't told me when they're going to start on it, but hopefully within the next couple of weeks, um, that's going to cost this SS a little about six, six and a thousand dollar dollars. So one of our turbos blew on of our ambulances, our oldest ambulance, so it's going to the shop up tomorrow. Um, we still have Bay door that that went seven. We've already paid like ten thousand dollars on it. We're still waiting, still waiting parts with COVID and the shipping and all that. It, it's taken a long time. And they have bay door that broke broke a weekend the cable, but overhead door's coming tomorrow to fix that. And July twenty first, we have the battle of the badges a dry. So it's fire department fire first, police department. But since I'm letting everybody know, if you go get, get blood, you put down fire department. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we did have 
received another flyer fire for the Desert Iron Air Motorcycle <laughs> Club. They're doing like a bike bike and car show on July 16th. They're raising raising for pretty much much bad for back to school for the kids. And then our fire academy is currently start. They started started week two day. They're doing good. Good. They go tomorrow's monument to do some forcible entry, forcible exit. And then Friday afternoon, we did receive a five thousand dollar donation from the show. So, end of the good. Day. There you go. Other than that, that that's all I. Any questions? So. Of course, the day that I had it had it scheduled for, it was cloudy and nasty weather. So we went ahead and canceled it because we don't want to freak the city out. Um, we, we have not scheduled it as of now, right but I'm going to get that, that done. I haven't heard of any changes. So, like I said, they were scheduled it. It was nasty. So, so like I have uh, discussed guys, with Mr. Mayor. Mayor um, um, one thing I am tr looking at doing is since all of our alarm are more to the west side of town with nothing on the east of town, uh, we're looking at grand grants to hopefully we get a more of the sirens and put one like by the country, country club, one north of the rodeo arena in that area. So it would kind of alert to few people in that sound as well. Uh, now that I don't know, I'm still looking at grants, and I, was, I don't really, really know who to go through on that. I mean, I mean that's just not fire department, but I'm just trying to you know, stay, stay a little bit. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? We did. We have got got with Jane on that, and. That's what I just want to say that I'm very thankful for being here and enjoying myself. This past weekend, we went out and had a burger over at the veterans homes over here. It was great. Uh, Looking forward to a lot of things. I'm you know, here. We got smoke smoking on the bus coming up. Looking forward to that. Right around the corner, we got the light coming up. Praying for rain. We need rain, so yeah. you know the kids are out. are out playing ball. I've seen the county put out out there. There's just a, a good concert at the parade there. I mean, at the fair this year. I mean, so many things, things look forward. Some people out loud, up and by, by eating. You know, I just have to say that I'm thankful and uh, just people keep on what they're doing, doing because they're going in the right direction. <laughs> Very happy. And that's making me impress a little bit more. Also, I uh, wanted to say, say special thank you to uh, Code co Enforcement. Get another clean up up our areas. Thank you all very much. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Are you pretty on Chief, yes, sir. Could you give me the phone number for the mini at the CCA? Because, like my mother was, when we call there, they great, great. They moved into loving to There's nobody there where you have something that's not a 911 call. So you go to the first first deal, and then you go to the second one, and then the last thing you give you is this dispatch for all else. For all else, yeah. Least, so uh, for all else should be first, and then if you want to go through all, all the other stuff, because that makes sense to me. But you know, after after being rudely awakened by a very angry woman or disturbance, call that you wanted. And having to go to go through thing with her in the middle of the night, but I didn't appreciate it. But love is a funny thing. So, so if we can make a suggestion, maybe, maybe I'm happy to report, Commissioner Gantt. Yeah, we're going to hold that act till it's official. I have, uh, I believe that they're working with streamlining that system. 
so that we, I don't, I don't want to get out of the bag bag. Um, we're going to doing the, the menu by city, by municipality, directly go into your city. That's the stream. Yeah, no, that's what we need to be body working on. Just, so just right now, it's just a cluster of, this it's a hot just five just different here. cities. And no, you got well, from this, whatever here, and then, then and then you got the next, next one, and by the time you're frustrated, you wait for somebody. And then listen, listen, to and. So not to see why would you be worried. You no, know, but that was very rude. I apologize, but I But um, um, the simple fact is, you have to go through that. We're halfway to mouse mark to get through through that. So, so there's a, the there's our road of shirt or something like that that needs to be changed out roadway. You have to go through all of that on the top. You're stuff that's too far, far away, and you care less if who, who ran. So, so it is tough, frustrating in that form, you know, and, and noise complaints, a different like that, you know, after that, you just give up and then other things happen. And, then she and I'll glad, gladly give a number and we, and we can sit down and we can talk up to her, but I do know they are working on it. It's a much better system. I think it would be happy. Doesn't matter. Less upset. Right. <laughs> she had my <laughs> happy spouse. Happy I don't know. I've been working on it for a long time. That's all I have. Yes, sir. David. Mr. Mayor, members, you should know. Next week, I will attend the Managers Conference in Rio de Janeiro, Mexico. That'll be on uh, Wednesday, 22nd, Thursday. Um, and at this, this time, are there any questions that the mayor or commission may have? I have no one. Who's thinking about the splash pad? Splash pad, I'm not Splash pad, we are waiting on parts out of the upper peak. Um, hopefully, we'll get that up and running very clearly. Uh, my anticipation it will be this month, but again, I will follow up tomorrow. And find out now that those must have been ordered and held once the time frame. Okay, okay. Third question I have is with the, the uh, Saudis. Last time we talked, talked, you were going to have a meeting with my calendar. And I just wondered if you haven't heard anything on that. What's going on? Now? That's correct, Commissioner. I met with Mr. Mr. Mike Gallagher, and our tentative date is, is July of this year. Now, our plan is a transition. We need to make sure that uh, Bernardo and his crew. The county are working together for that transition. So, July. The other track we're looking at the end of July. Okay. Any other questions? Hey, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, on, on Main Street project, we had some valves that we did not need for return. Um, of course, we had to pay, pay a reshelve on those, um, <laughs> but the reshelving was all compared to we uh, actually were able to save on that. The, the um, so we the four butterfly valves that we returned were twenty one thousand dollars each. Uh, the 20-25% restocking fee, um, burger goods is on that, and then then end up totaling we will receive eight eight thousand back. Um, so well, of course that'll just help offset some of the other expenses we're coming in to do. So it's a little bit of a saving of thing. I'm going to let you know, you in on that. Um, like she mentioned, the Jackson Street project is is done. We're relating final numbers on that. We were on budget, so we do this. State so much we have we have to still pay twenty five five percent of the actual cost and reimburse the state what was thinking that, that they owe. Um, I've been cross processing tons and tons tons of grouping permits, so um, that's keeping me very very busy. Um, being assisting owners uh, with our homeowner permits because because most people that come come in. Yeah, they, they know how to get on and fix it. They have no how to follow the permits. Um, several of them don't have computers at their home. They have no way of so on. 
trying to help as many of as I can go through that process so they can write permits. Can you hire higher level? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. So thank you. David Gomez is a brand new person. Uh, he is uh, uh, been mentally overwhelmed, <laughs> I, I do believe, uh, uh, but doing very well. Well, he is adjusting and he's learning. He's went on a few uh, little walks to help look up different things and, and is being able to do that. Hi, Court. Magistrate Court, well, we know the still going up. No, we're oh, on that. We will be closing down Avenue A um, with the 20th this month to the end of the month uh, so they can connect the fire suppression system because they will start on the rough end plumbing at the end of this month. Um, working with Legally County, we have some costs be included. That's a direct cost that we pay directly to Legally County Electric for moving the transformers and stuff that are in the way of the construction. But I'm handling all that with John Cobb. Anything further? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, do, do we know approximately how many we're going to finish the west side, possibly start on the Dorian side? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> so they still have to finish uh, the the. We're trying to start down there on the uh, of course on the south side of Avenue D, and, and that is where storm drain drain system will start is down there. And they'll do 850 feet every 850 feet feet. They'll do one side of the road, get that completed, then they'll do, they'll do the opposite road. Um, so that as they come come up with every 850 feet. All the way to Maine and then come up Maine to, to Jackson. That's what's going to take so much time. That's because they'll be doing 800 feet. And after they get up with each 850 feet, you'll have to come curb, side, sidewalkers, everything in the sections done. So, this last time I go through and to shut down all the roads will be the last time, but it's going to be a very good process. Do you mean for it? I just want to say thank you for helping the people in the services with the Hale National Roots. And I know a lot of people, it's, it's a foreign language. So, so what you're doing is helping them out very much. I had a local comment after the comment. I'm going to start complimenting the department that you were on everything. And uh, it's not only easy for them, but also helping you. I think they said you're doing a great job in the top. I would do the exact work. Sorry, anything? So, we draft, put together with the deed um, for the convenience and still other details to put together on that, obviously, as we work through that process. That's, um, I may have some comments later about a 40 year water plan, but nothing, nothing since I've talked talk to you last. I'll be happy, happy to bring questions if you have. Yeah. We move it forward at all on the railroad. There's no more move forward since the last week we talked, but the dialogue is still open. So my my experience with railroad is just just keep keep after them, and eventually, if they realize you know it's not going to go away, away then I come out and take a look at it. So so that that's probably where we're going to be. I don't think anything I think accomplished, you know, July or August, but it's not very time consuming to keep your mind in it. So it'll get done. It's just going to, it's yeah, going to be, so, it's, yeah. Not, not, not even. Yeah. it's, it's unfortunately when you deal with something like that, it's going to be at the end. If there's convenience and time, I just have to be very persistent. If you'd like to send any pictures, they'll show you like they've much now for the last season. Yeah. I thought about uh, like shiny, shiny. <laughs> having some kind of process and dealing with that mm -hmm. one way or the other. So that may be where I would have put it before, but long enough. Yeah. I, I said, I don't have to try it. Across that. Yeah. Just, you know, no, no matter how slow you can go, it's horrible. <laughs> would they, they be responsible for any damages to? Yeah. If it's if it's something that where there, where there are games, and there may be, I don't know if there's acts that caused there or other things like that, but if there have been some reported, or somebody in the public says, hey, you know, I rim, this is what it costs. Or, you know, if everybody avoid, avoid, I don't know, but, but is there a crossing? Um, the railroad is, is a little different. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, government where you've got certain things you can sue them for. They, they government tells you, and we're part of that process. 
you know, um, what we can be and be for what we can't. And so the railroad is not in the same exact position. They're in a very, very unique position as far as what rights were given as far as you know, the western part of the United States. And so um, they're not as easy of a target, let's say, as say, you know, somebody that had you know, a private drive or some other um, through throughput out, you know, a park car is not at one of the shops, for example. So they're a little bit trickier to deal with, but but persistence is usually what what's up for those. I think one answer could be if somebody's always going to be able to enter, maybe even put a little brush on, because uh, when I was driving back to Carlsbad, that one railroad car was a couple times had to have spots in my car. Yeah, yeah. And then what do we hear? Right, but, uh, it, but 70 miles is you know, 70 sure. yeah. 100 or so, but, but it was mainly the you know, OP. He is a guy who went to uh, the railroad and they, uh, the railroad and uh, they got it. Yeah, that's the same spur that ties into us here. Yeah, and that's a good example. You know, I think I moved to New Mexico in 95. Sometimes I, I was going, you know, you know, seven, five miles an hour, it slowed down to 30 to cross that. Yeah. And then how many years years it took? I'm not saying it's going to take oh, yeah, years. Yeah. That's, a, that's a major, you know, and with, with trucks and a lot of dangerous, you know, uh, cargo. And so that, that is not not at the top of the rate. <laughs> I have nothing further to add for the time, so we will now be moving to our public comments. Uh, uh, first of all, we encourage uh, anyone that has this to bring to the commission, please uh, to do so. You uh, approach the podium, take your name, and then three minutes or less, please. Uh, again, I will emphasize that this is a meeting means so that we get. Customers. This is a time in the debate. If there are questions that come from the commission, the A will address you. And please don't, don't address other commenters from as a part of the public comments. So, anyway, just, uh, if that way move along. Everybody take care of everything and we can get through this stuff. So, at so this time, your convenience. Anyone has something to say? Brandy, Sable, um, I am part of the Chain Chamber, and I noticed it's on your agenda tonight to talk about contracts. And we're not doing a formal presentation, just in respect of your time. I know you have a very busy agenda. I'm just, um, Arthur wasn't able to make it tonight. tonight. She sent me for comments. So I'll be um, so, just so that people don't uh, forget what the Chamber of Commerce says for the community, the Chamber it is the, the front point in contact with the European community. People into the area, area resources, and value for businesses. Sorry. The Lexington Chamber of Commerce provides value and services associated with the community and businesses. Once our business, once the once a business or community meeting member arrives, our job is to give them what they, they need to continue keeping their doors open. Chambers of Commerce provide access to valuable resources, discounts, and a relationship that help businesses save money and market their products. Plus, the Chamber adds value, value to individuals by producing events, work workshops, and outreach that everyday community needs. Levington to EDC. Is tasked with bringing um, options to the city for new businesses look, looking to open in Lovington and to Main Street. The find and by the crews <laughs> it is proven to develop the Main Street area through economic development and, and historic preservation. And the Chamber of Commerce is here to make our community is being pampered and our and our businesses have a network of support. Here's just a few of the things we provide. Network, networking opportunities, the visitors are to Trixie, the health shop, the spirit of the season, and the electric light. So social media, our off the clock fictions, annual awards, that include citizen and business of the year, fair and rodeo parade, 
party in the park, <coughs> team job, team job, air, ribbon cuttings, workshops, and speaking group, web blasts, and mobile no, no services, <coughs> the Google search engine um, optimization. So those are some of the services we provide that we just want to highlight those as well. <laughs> First, I want to thank the Commission in the City of Wellington for the education that they have given us the past year. We are very grateful. And again, I hope that you put it in the budget for 2022 and 2023. Um, <clears throat> don't have a budget today because we don't have any the city that takes all of our, our responsibilities. The only thing we have is this the happens that the city citizens. So, so I don't have anything further other than the con contract that's coming up. Um, I have I haven't seen it yet, but I would like to uh, Take a look at it. We had some revision of this. So that's it. Thank you so much. Anyone? Don't be shy. All right. All right. Well, now, uh, moving to not non active. I think you want to introduce Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the at this time, uh, we have John Shoemaker, an associate, yes, that he updated the city of London for a year. Uh, one. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, sirs, I appreciate being here here tonight. Uh, my name is Roger Priest. I'm a uh, chief uh, teller. I've been doing this for a couple of years. I think when I first started working in the Lee County County, I still had the air. Uh, um, I have a short presentation for you this evening. Um, we did the original uh, water plan with you all in 2014. And so I'm going to go through what a water plan is about. Just give a couple, a couple examples of things that were in the original plan, what's in the plan, and then where we need to be going for the future. There. Um, so with that being said, uh, the state requires you to have a full year water supply plan. Uh, what our supply plan does, it does the municipalities and universities, things like that, to hold excess water rights rights for a 40 year planning period. That's uh, not that's something that everybody gets to do because it's called spe speculation is otherwise. Why? So uh, you have to have a plan if you want to move water rights, if you want to get new water rights, and if you hold them for a 40 year, for a 40 year period. Uh, the thing it can be be used for, I think it's going to be very special for you, uh, hopefully, is that you can use it to try to get funding from, from the Mexican Environment Department, uh, the State Engineer, Office of State Engineer, Engineer, Water Tour, and perhaps Bureau of Reclamation Smart Program to help do uh, infrastructure improvements. So as I said, we did the, the uh, previous plan in 2014, and, and these plans are really intended to be, to be living documents that are updated from time to time to see, see what progress has been. How your communities change, how you might want to use your water differently, or have new businesses, or that's what you meant. So that you make sure you're okay for the for the future, not just from a water rights standpoint, from a, a physical water standpoint, as well. Next one, please. So what's in the plan? So water rights needed for the future, which I just discussed. So, so the hydrology, hydrogeology of the, of the available ground groundwater life. So what's, what's in the what's in the Oglala aquifer here? How fast is it going down? Will it meet your future needs? Um, and then some deep some details about your infrastructure, where all the wells are located, potential contaminants and source that might be, be near wells that could be danger wells or well well field. Um, water use by category. Um, how, how much each category using domestic, commercial, industrial? Um, population projections because people need to use more water in the future for more businesses, things of that nature. Also, your water rate structure, um, so you know what each class structure is, and the public knows what each, each uh, class structure is and how it changes in the future. 
um, um, reuse, if that's uh, applicable, which obviously is here, and conservation measures that you have in place and that you propose to reduce your water use in the future. So, so two examples from the 2014 plan. This was uh, how we looked at population project projection. As you, as you can see, the uh, red boxes, the red squares, or, or one store population was, and we took that, that trend um, sort of as a straight line approach. It does decrease in terms of percent of growth over, over time. And um, it's really kind of a worst case look at, at the population you would have. have. I guess worst being the most water use, not worst case, being the most water use you would have for the future. So that's, that's why we looked that way. But if you follow up that line from 2020, you can see that blue bulls right on it, and um, that's about 13,000 people was projected for 2020. The 2020 census, however, was 11,668, so a little bit projected from our standpoint. But um, that that's the things that we'll be re updating for the next plan. That previous slide, what was the? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't see it. What is the bottom line? The bottom, well, line. bottom line, line right is the uh, percent change over over time. Starts off at about a two percent increase, increase population growth, and then down to about one one point six at the end of the uh, twenty forty year plan. So perhaps a way to look at this for the future is what we saw in the year twenty fifteen the uh, comprehensive plan that was done, and this looks at three three different areas. The top line is the high growth. The middle red line is the uh, medium. And the blue on the bottom was low growth projection. Actually, the low growth projection more closely matches uh, what 2020 census had. So it's only off of about 300 people. So we'll look at, look at something similar to that, that as we take this plan. And so the, the estimate of the plan is based on the amount of water people use. They call it gallons per capita a day. And so it takes, it takes all the water everybody uses is divided by the number of people. So that's water use, pollution control, industrial, just everything that goes into the system. And so it was projected to uh, uh, that you be out of water rights, paper water rights, by the, uh, the full planning period. Your water rights are at that time uh, 6,017. And I don't know, did you did any, any more water been purchased? purchased and, uh, no. Okay. okay. So based on so what we're seeing, we're seeing oh, we're going to be going to be fine. We've got to run, to run through the calculations and so forth for the four-year planning period. Let me um, ask a question on that. Tonight, but who's yeah. that? When we acquired the property that uh, uh, on uh, Arkansas Jeff Jones, were there no water rights that came, came with that? I mean, they supposed <laughs> that would have been since 2004. We are we're, we're looking at purchases. Right. So um, in New Mexico, uh, you can set, sever the rights from the surface. So originally the surface only start off with the mineral rights, water rights, solar, and then the surface. And in that, that instance, we purchased just the surface. And so, so then the water right, I still own those water right. I don't think, don't think the ability for that water right owner to use the surface, so they would have to move that to a different location. Right. We purchased the water. water. My okay. Well, we talked about it this afternoon. I did, didn't so, so as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, the gallon per capita days total water diverted into the system divided by the number of people that live. And, and so, in 11 to 2020, your water use ranged from about 233 to 216 gallons per capita day. Um, regional plan that the state of the engineer, I'm sorry, the interstate, interstate stream chain put together in 2016. So your water uh, GPCD was 230. Since these plans were done, uh, the uh, state engineer's office has developed a calculator that, that they wanted to use statewide to calculate the gallons per capita day use. So, so that we'll be using the business this plans updated. Um, one of the caveats in their rec recommendation is that if, if you fall into different brackets, they have different um, um, creation measures that they would like me. You know, if you're in the 200 or the 300 gallons per capita day use, and the, and the 20 bed in the 40 year planning period, they want to reduce your use to 150 gallons per gallon per capita. Day. So, so, so it's a fair piece of where you are currently. Uh, so, so anyway, to comparison to some of the other cities recently within the last uh, two to four years, I think it was 200, it was 169, Hobbs 218, and uh, Portales also in So those similar communities, um, I think, for a community that's it's harder 
to get that, that GPC number lower because you have fewer fewer people and water uses. You, know, you look at big six cities like Castle or Albuquerque, they're down in the in the 120 range, 120, 120, 125. But that uses spread out or a lot more people to call versus in the industry and everything else. So one of the th things we're concerned about, and I'm sure you are too, is uh, what's the rate of deep decline in our offer? How long is it is it going to last? Um, this upper this upper right right image, there are these dots dots represent our levels in it. And it, it well, we don't we don't model well, but just wanted to just show you what the range was in 2014. So the one on the upper right, there was an increase of about 0.03 per year over the period of rest of that well well, which is well, let's see, that started, started off in about 1976 uh, to 2014. And the uh, one on the lower left was a 1.02 feet per year of decline. The average decline at that time was about 1.6 feet per year. Um, the problem with the, with the Ogallagas, you know, the, the blessing is makes a lot of water. It's real sandy. You, you get a lot of good production out of it. The curse is, is if you're if not, not you particularly, but in the area, uh, the water is being mined out at a much, much faster rate than it can be being charged. And so, while not as fast as, say, um, is Portals, where the race to the pump is real, they have a lot, a lot of this where the aquifers can dry, and they have a target just, just these little low areas that still have water within them. You're not there, but it's still some, something to be concerned about, and water conservation is, is, is a big deal. Um, so you have water reuse, which is a really great thing uh, in 2014 and 2015, but both of those plants said you were recycling about 840 acres per year that went to, to non-food ops. Uh, we'll look at this again, we'll have to get the uh, information from you, but we'll look, we'll look at that again, uh, talk about other potential uses, parks and, and uh, various things, things like that, cemetery. Uh, we know that since the land came out, there's been there's been a lot of meter replacements that have gone on. And you have uh, obviously an ongoing uh, line replacement project that's driving around today and for ever long. So that's going to help out the water loss quite a bit. So the plan up for you know it's not quite a matter of rinse repeat, but but it's uh, going to be some very similar things that need to be looked at here. I'm going to go through the, the we don't have to really go through them really. Water records, nothing's changed, so that would be nice. Um, we'll put in a plan what you've done to help try to stop water loss and help meter and understand water use piece better. And then we'll look at the current current um, since the 2014 plan. And then the AWWA, which is the American Water Works Association, has a spreadsheet to look at um, where your water's going to go. So, when you have water coming into a system, you have all the meter metered water coming, and then you have all the metered water going out. And in some cases, uh, I think you'll you all some headway on this, but not all of your uses are metered still. And so you're you're again, you know, you're talking about your accounting earlier, get certified these books. Well, you have some problems with that too. So whatever's metered metered in, and what's metered in going out. Whatever, whatever's left is the unaccounted for all water, which are leaks or meter inaccuracies, things like that. And so this will be one of the things, things they were talking today with more we were talking to the mayor. I'm sorry, the mayor and the staff. Um, one of the things we will be in this plan. Um, but it turns out that the water, I didn't know about this before I started, but the uh, water use is pretty much, much the same. You're still putting it on the uh, non non irrigated non crops. Nothing else changed since the 2014 plan. So groundwater declines will be a big one that we'll be looking at again. We want, we want to make sure that there's um, ample water supply future and what that water supply will look, will look like in 40 years in terms of the declines. We'll not only just, just protect the um, water levels that are in an area, but we'll also run the state and engineer groundwater flow model uh, policy kind of project X40 in the period as well. Um, as you know, there's there's um, some area in the field where you have potential contaminant sources. There's quite a few of them actually will date that documentation and put those areas on map and, and then any new that might have come around that are known about since the last plan plan. Conservation measure measures to reduce the gallon per capita day usage and will project future demands and identify other water reuse programs. Uh, so when you're reusing water, if you really want, want more than one, not at it, the best way to do it is to, to get parks, 
um, and other things where you're pumping your drinking water, water out rather than doing a non-food crop. You know, maybe we push for those kind of things. I think what's think real important on this plan is to have not only for each of the projects, but an implementation schedule. So it would be important to say, okay, if we're really going to make these goals, goal, instead of this just being in the plan that's on, just get off every once in a while. If you really want a plan to reduce your water use and to have a long, long supply, it takes both the ideas and implementation schedule. Perfect. Might be at oh, working together. We just told you we were working earlier today on the thing, and um, uh, public participation will be an important part of this too. We'll work with you about uh, questionnaires for the public to comment on, and then those perhaps could be posted on your website or maybe go over the water bill or something like that. I have some ideas, yes, from uh, some of the other places that work with like the village for associate loss groups, just like that. That uh, I'll push over, show over and see what you like about it or don't like. It. We'll come up with something to get some public input as well. So it's a really important part of every plan. And that's pretty, pretty much it for my present presentation this evening. I have, I have none. I didn't bring earlier today. Yeah, All right, thank you. Very excited. Uh, I would like to say thank the county, my commissioner, long, long, uh, was able to approach my name so we could uh, start this again. I'd like to say thank you for allowing that. And from what we see, it's only because we have made it since 2014 15. We spoke, there is no term on the plan that we have. But it should be the uh, living document that we are here updating, at least on some sort of a regular schedule. So I think it's time, and I think we're going to be surprised on the results. Super. Well, thank you, Mayor and Council. We appreciate being here tonight. Thank you. All right. We move on, on to the next. Are you going to take it? Yes, thank you. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh, now, the district board members positions as a colonial and our abilities and our PTC. Uh, Gina Jens, their terms have expired. Um, as mentioned, Gina Hutchins is the ETZ rep, rep for the code that has to be at least one representative in the ETZ zone with parks and recreation. And any who is interested can stop by City Hall. The approval will be on June 2026. <laughs> Have you stepped to the old board members? Yes, yes. Um, the only ones that I have gotten um, confirmation they would like to continue is uh, Gina Hutchins and Robert Dillers. I have not heard back from them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so the 12201 Tyler had no bids coming in on the bid date. So I didn't know if I wanted to get some feedback from you guys on do you want to remove the wording in it? Do you think might have caused us to no bids or do you want to give it a while before we put it out the bid in? What is it you guys suggest on that? <laughs> Again, if not, go back to the back file. We get some later, 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 All right. Um, you also? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, a public hearing on the, the DBD group. Um, a lot of the discussion focused mainly on sanitary improvements, water line infrastructure improvements. Uh, we had some other notations on a few other things, but. Uh, all in all, the people that were there for presence. 
they really, really wanted to focus the, the grant on infrastructure for utilities. So that's where it comes down to, we've got to decide our project, the project um, to do grant has to be in our CIP list. So in order to do that, do that, we have to update our ICIP. Um, unless it is something thing that's already on the ICCP that you guys would like to see us do this correct for. Uh, um, we need to get a front project signed on um, before the end of July, I do believe. Yes, the wastewater plan improvements were suggested. Um, water line infrastructure through, throughout the city, uh, just because of the, the amount of leaks the city has. Um, but when, when we look at doing water line, line infrastructure at the city, you're also looking at having to pay because, because most lines are under pavement. I think in order to assess that as well, is that a lot of our requirements are, are in the Yeah, and then like, like I thought Main Street are all being replaced and updated. I, I know one one off chairs. Yeah. Uh, that and so that's going to be another thing. Uh, uh, we wanted to look and look at something that possibly updating all the hydrants in the city. That would be a great, great we should write work with this program. but. So that again, yeah. Does it give me, he's, he's hopefully by his two weeks. So you're in a sweet spot, we can never ask this one So you were saying by the end of July, it mm -hmm. doesn't die in our fiscal year. Yeah, sure. no, because this seems we're writing for this grant, grant really, and that's where you've got to come up with a project idea. Okay. By the end of July, I've got to have something so, so I can start yep. turning in, getting all the other, uh, I'll have to have engineering and things like that, and estimates, and it's quite a lengthy, lengthy process to do this grant. Um, so, yeah, yeah, the more time I have to do the rest of this, the mm -hmm. better. So that's where, where we decide on the, on the project. Okay. Dr. Martinez, do you have an uh, opinion on how you want, want to see in, in using these five projects? Are you the thought? Do you have, do we want to put a committee together? Do we want to have another? Uh, how do we want to move in that direction? Well, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Commission, uh, um, I, I believe that we need to sit down and come up with our top five, five projects. This fiscal year, the ICIP top list. Um, I do agree, agree with Chris Wall that, that our sweat should be one of our priorities or our uh, water district structure. But I think we need to sit down and go over our ICIP, what will be our top, top five or six list for uh, Capital Valley when we go to December 7th, 8th, and 9th. Time on possibly kind of the back. The ICICIP with the CDBDBG would be like Crystal said July, but our list should be by by October. We should have a list by October. I'll get with the thoughts. That's the ICICIP. The ICICIP. I would have to be with the DFA to find out the specific time. And not suggested to Dr. Martinez about the project that we Representative of this district. So I am part of the awarding for this area. 
um, we award in October. We received the applications in September, so it's got to be so sooner than that. Yeah. Um, I had mentioned I was, I was a planning, uh, I, I only think based, based on the application that we get throughout the state of New Mexico, it's all wastewater treatment, treatment plants, um, sidewalk curbs, gutters, line utility extension, and if it's yeah, the amount you can receive is 750000 unless you can prove that it's an emergency agency, that it's affecting the community, that there's a, um, it's, it's functioning, then you do the ability to, to apply for emergency funding and you are able to uh, get up to a million dollars. You have to, you, you do have to have evidence that it is an emergency state, um, um, but that I, I, I sooner than that, I think anything it's due. Yeah, it's due before the ICIP test is. That's why I say I need it yeah. sometime in July uh, so I can finish writing out my program. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Because we'll get all, get all the applications now, all the, all the applications submitted in September, and then we are set, set meeting in October to award. And I do know that they have um, $28 million to give out. We'll take it. <laughs> 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 so it's basically first come for first serve. So you want to get it in and pay uh, us No, they're all do it at one. They'll do it like certain time. And, and yeah, the sooner you get them, get them made better. They don't. They don't review a certain date. They're not looking at like, oh, this this come in first. No, they look at your actual project and and the binder have put together on their own. This is. A huge binder. It's got like four, 14 category sections out in it of things I have to complete in this binder to actually submit the application. The only reason I was asking because some of the funding they're looking at before wasn't for first come first. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Okay. I know, I know she's here. Are you going to speak on that? Um, it's on the, the Main Street for uh, Yes. Okay. So, so we got mud on the plaza this this weekend. <laughs> I'll start there. Um, um, we doing that Friday and Saturday. Friday night is going to be our family fun night. We will have a free rollerblading rink, a free phone credit pit, um, where everyone can come out and hang out. We will also be, also be doing the marshmallows with the fire department, and they will be talking about fire safety during that. Uh, this is the 11th annual smoke and roll plaza. We have about 30 contestants, 30 vendors. And live music Friday or Saturday from 5:30 till 10, and then um, we, all, we also have Cornwall and Beer Garden on Saturday. So a little bit of everything for everybody, I think. So I did want to kind of start off. We have new commissioners on, and I wanted to do, kind of take us back to see what uh, what loving to make is. And if you don't know, but we are of not only a state program but also a national program. We have to follow national <laughs> guidelines in order to maintain our status. And um, Mexico Main Street is actually in the Economic de Development Department of the state. So we are an economic development organization that is our our primary focus. Uh, but we have a district. So meeting meeting people, they have Main Street. It means Main Street. It does not. not. Um, it actually goes from. Uh, Madison Street, Street up to Avenue D, and then from, from 2nd Street to Love Street, that is District to map, map on that little hard to put if anybody if ever heard one copy of that map, I'd be more than happy to send it over. The, the big thing about Main Street America is that there is a four-point approach. Um, it focuses on, on four different things. So or, organization, it's really of connecting the public sector and the private sector together to be, to be able to make uh, revitalization happen in downtown. Design, design that's uh, going back to the historic nature and serving our culture here in the downtown town. And we also have the house motion, which a lot of people don't know is our kind of that. Uh, but really, you know, much more is about bringing people to downtown in Lovington and not just for that. Um, and then economic vitality, which is, is also economic development. Um, so these are the grant awarding of awards that we that we had. Uh, all of these awards have actually gone back directly into the downtown district. These are, these are not funds we can use um, for our funding or 
for paying for staff or our insurance or any of those things, all of this actually goes directly back into the community and it's over, over a million dollars there's in fund directly for the loving Center. And this has been open over these five years. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. And we hope to continue. We are applying to into a few more others. So hopefully we can bring in more money. And you can go to the next message. Like I mentioned earlier, we are a part of the state and ANA program. The state program has um, a lot of other different actions that it helps us do. One of the big things that they actually have what they call revitalization specialists. These are type positions that, that we tap into and use for our downtown businesses. For example, right now we're working with Shorty's, which is the sports club that's coming to Lexington. Um, on their architectural show over and we created a big local club. Um, and so all of these, these services are completely free to our downtown business um, and they're consultants that they, we traditionally would not, not have access to. And another one that we've been using is a farm, farm development. So we're working on the wonderful building that's falling down on Central um, and find, finding different ways and ways to address those. And again, these consultants are completely free to us, but they, they are part of the New Mexico, Mexico Street uh, program. And so they provide those to us. We have, I don't want to say a limitless amount of them, but we have a lot of different things we can use them for. And I just mentioned the two of you, and that will be just Justin this year to help them with them. Uh, uh, go ahead and go on to the next thing. Um, so I mentioned we have four points to design. These are all the different things that we have done or are currently working on. Way by finding time, we're waiting on an interview. Um, we have already started installation. So if you've seen some giant green poles, over by um, the judicial complex, by the library, and and after that, those are part of our, our wayfinding signs. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, that funding, those awards actually funded this. This is a $138,000 project, all completely free to the city of Lovington. For, for Ashley Buffett, we may maintain that as well as having all, all the light, light electrical that, and benches that are in, in that area, as well as the uh, um, sculptures. Storybook Park was, was previously launched. That, that was the first project ever. And we did redevelop that at Antarctic again, again, fully fun. Um, Twinkle Lights, those are the ones on, on Washington Central. We always do the beautification campaign with the, with the Keep Loving Beautiful. The Thought Improvement Match Grants, those are open to our, to our down businesses. This is $500 for thought or exterior improvement. Again, I'm trying to make sure that the downtown is looking good. Our paint downtown is a new thing we added. Um, we have we have some bills that are, are, are not prettiest. And um, we are at a point where we are going to do it ourselves. <laughs> um, we don't want to keep looking at ugly buildings. And as you see, the Main Street completely um, be redeveloped and reconstructed. We want to make sure that that town is cohesive with that and, and that all of it looks really nice. Um, the next big thing on that is going to be our construction creation. We do work closely with with Pro and a DOT as instructors to find out information slash solutions for downtown businesses. Um, the biggest thing with that is they do have let us know what's going on, but we can communicate back and forth, forth and be able to provide like that. Um, I know I know in the past, the biggest concern with, with our nine projects that is that these are additional costs for the city, city um, in terms of maintaining and upkeeping. Um, but, but I do want you guys to know that for as long, long as I've been street, we have, we have only been all, all the keys, including today when CNN was out there, replacing bulbs and actually the uh, storybook had a couple of issues with the light lights and so falling down. Now, and all those are completely made by our organization. Uh, in theory, yes, the city should be maintaining and keeping them. But since we have been so successful in grant funding, we're just, we're just doing it on our own and continue that out throughout. Um, anytime then that we have the opportunity, we definitely have to apply. Oh, and I forgot about Central Alley, which that's, um, has already started it and we're hoping to start block, block two or phase two. Uh, and, then, and then probably after two we'll be able to pause it because it's crazy. Um, but, but, go back. Uh, Sorry. Uh, but, but Central Alley is going to be a block, five block area of, of down lighting and, and graffiti. Um, we, all of it is going to highlight the energy sector slash our community. And what, what we hope to do with that is actually do some shop local promotion instead of, you know, shutting off the, off the front of the We will be shutting down alleys and be able to partner with our local businesses just to offer thought local promotion similar to like your 
um, wine and wine and stroll shop and stroll stroll that they do in Lake Dove, so and, and other things like that. So we're really excited to be to be going that um, again. We pay for that. Um, we pay for the electricity um, at that at that central. Alley. We do work with our local. We're downtown businesses to offset some of those costs as well. Okay. Um, economic vitality, the whole point of that is to, to really create a dining and entertainment cluster downtown. Um, as you guys might know, we have a lot of administration professional office, and that means that, that at the clock, every, every step, and there's nothing else that goes on in downtown. And we really don't want to do that because we believe that in order, order to keep our community here, we really have to create a for them to have experience and entertainment in Lovington itself. Um, so, of course, the first one is the local, local Bayer's Institute that has been funded by the USDA for three years in a row. row. We got our wonderful, wonderful food truck from that, and we're, and we're super excited. We have, we have a chance to try out their concepts. They're going in right now, and they'll be going, going all over long. Um, the next one is the Behind the Facade Improvement Match Grant, right? and that for us is actually a uh, uh, that's the ten thousand dollars in matching funds that um, they can use for electrical plumbing, anything interior to help businesses either either a um, relocate into downtown or be, be able to sell to those property owners so that they can't rent out out places and actually sell them when instead of being vacant places. We do offer one-on-one -on -one consultations, like I mentioned earlier. We do use our New Mexico mainstream services directly for our small businesses. Um, they use them whenever they like. Uh, we would also provide additional additional assistance in terms of not like hand holding, but kind of like hand holding. <laughs> Sometimes they, they just want to be to have those discussions, you know, if they're trying to do something new, like a sport club is a wonderful example. Um, they try something different, and we're going to have those discussions and be able to um, guide, guide them a long way. Um, the later we have, we're really, 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 really hopeful that this will be the year that we get the lead theater. Um, as you guys know, we have, we have worked uh, with, with the city of Winston in the past, uh, not only to acquire the building, but also, also maintain it. And now we're hoping that we can redo the market with the 200K from Capital Capital. Um, we really, really, really believe that the theater is an important part uh, of town, not only in terms of the Colby, uh, but it has the opportunity to really be a stake, uh, uh, stakeholding business under it. And, and on it. Uh, we want to be able to also have some things for again, again, people to stay in Lincoln. We have a what I think is a really good business plan. We have created a three year projection along with it. Um, so our numbers are in that. Let's have a, have a conversation. You guys are ready. Um, and, and then the thing that I have is the not bake kitchen digs. These are pop up events that have in vacant buildings in downtown. Well, what we try to do to not make it a kitchen dig is to provide community with a, with a different business plan and, and opportunity to see, hey, would you guys like this? Would you support a of something like this? Or is this just a terrible idea and the business should ever locate that in here? Um, we do bring, bring outside uh, our artists that are a little bit more different or more traditional than what we regularly have in Lovington. Um, and again, that's just to kind of promote, promote that idea of entertainment can have happen in Lovington. Um, the last one is our after after hour. On my main initiative, we are, are Trying to, to fix, or not fix, but to get rid of that ugly building. Building that it doesn't look, look like that, but I promise you, the entire roof is caved in. It's a huge catastrophe. Um, and what what we really do is turn that into a micro distillery. We do have an impact study that we paid for from from UEA, saying that that um, Lovington can sustain a micro distillery. However, it is race. We have, we have to be up. if Hobbs gets it before us, the Lovington will not be able to sustain that as a the business. Um, and so what we did was we actually, actually received USDA funds. Um, our, our goal with this is to offer a $3,000 grant uh, for equipment purchases. Um, the application will have, it will be scoring boring based. Um, so if you're from the area, then you're probably going to get higher points on your application. And you do have an entire, entire business and budget included in it. So we will be vetting those before we actually award them. And uh, hopefully we can get that building at the end of the year here. Okay. Yes. All right. Move on. The last one, like I said, is promotions. Everyone really has seen Love to Main Street as the event organization or the party organization. 
And not to say, say that we don't that we do good to get time, but our focus is definitely revitalized downtown. So all of our events have to have a benefit or a purpose of bringing people to downtown. So our shop local promotions, love teaming up and up with the lovely team. We're on those and those. Smoke it on the which is a signature event. Um we're Super excited to be increasing and doing that. Uh, uh, we have again the family really fun by night because we need to do a lot of uh and to have for, for all of our all of our families. We'll see. Um, um the live downtown, which is live music every every other Friday in downtown Lovington. We, we are work local out um in order to just to again have something to do here so that people aren't leaving the community and they're actually participating in it, all of these things. Um we can go. And then uh, just our, our upcoming events, I, I will, um, A, I have two comments. One comment is we had our beautification day kickoff, uh, not, not last week, before that, perhaps. and we had a total of 15 volunteers. Three of them were from Hobbs, that's when they saw it on Facebook, but I heard it on the radio, um, and they were super excited about that. And, and of those 15 volunteers, we only have five that stayed the entire time. Um, so one of our biggest things is how do we, how do we get people to and participate, right? We really would like to see more community, community pride, community involvement. Um, because when we're hearing from Hobbs citizens that are seeing our adver advertising, but we're still not pulling blood, loving them to, it kind of, it kind of hurts, you know? We really, really want to see community involved. We really care about loving and that's what we're here for. Um, so we'd, we'd love to see more people particip participate in Flooding and Beautify campaign is going on right now. You can pick up a clean ki kit for the city of Lovington or out at the museum. Those kits, kits include trash, blood, and if, if you take a video after the picture, upload it to face space, you're entered to win. We have a $500 cash prize to the group or person that cleans the most, most walk. Uh, the second place is 330 hundred dollars and again this is, this is all cash. We're just trying to motivate people to get out there and, and again be a little be a little bit more cool for the way our community looks as it is and with that i will stand and answer questions Actually goes towards staffing. 
Um, so it did not go to the event. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, you know, there's no Yes, and I can also so show you the million dollars in in for now. No, no, all of them. Yeah, actually, yeah, 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 no, it's it's right. Right. you don't have to have to fund everything you have to do by Because we're a nonprofit organization, is really what it is. At the end of the day, without funding from our local communities, we're done not able to, to sustain our, the $35,000 that the city of Lebanon provides. Again, goes towards staffing. It's a one and a half person show, and we get all of those things that I met, I met today completely done. done. Um, and for, for our event, definitely go out and actually actually sponsorship. Yes. I would really like to say just that the the back the plastic bags is really more of a of a honestly a partnership because bring a I would say a 12, 12, people event at to Lovington that increases our gas as well as all of the shop, the shopping that we get. Laundry tax funds. The largest tax goes directly towards sports marketing, and the largest tax tax is actually for so like you like your marketing to buy items for your event. Not with largest tax tax, no, actually legal. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just can't get donations for trash items like that. Mm -hmm. I'm actually struggling right now to get donations for water, water, uh, water bottles. If anybody's interested, and and honestly, trust her. If you guys guys would love to donate, you'd love to take like, a <laughs> Individuals are also encouraged to donate. Also, definitely you can. Um, like I said, we are a non nonprofit, so our 503 everything is tax deductible. Um, we partner with the schools for about two years. Whatever we needed to the city other. Yeah. On the back, yeah, the supplies that we bought you were get in some kind of form, we may provide with that to, to take out of your fund or whatever. What we don't provide a receipt, but actually my professional contract that you guys, you guys, guys with supplies for those things. Um, um, and like I said earlier, all of our grants have action towards infrastructure, infrastructure improvement and financing. They are not, they cannot be used for that. They can't, can't be advertising. They must be directly for those. For example, the central uh, um, alley, just the one, one block project was, was for $20,000. Um, the wayfinding was 130,000. That's not even construction documents that we also had to do. Um, and so, a lot of those, the fire phone that was another 30K. Brand Ash Ash was about 40K. Um, so, when you start adding all of these amounts, it definitely they, they go really, really fast. I went to the and you got to know Yeah, it's over five, five years. Because, like, everything that the Again, those but those award awards were really requested for specific projects and they cannot be used for anything else. We do not want to lose our Bible with the West reset by misappropriating our funds. So we have, we have to budget every year, year, so how are we supposed to know what we need to set back for, for your quarter for the shindigs every year? Because we never know when you're going to pop up and need supplies. I don't pop, pop up and need supplies in our event that actually happen on an annual basis. So we don't pop up, they going on 11 year, years, they ask for one, one box of chives and some 60 stacks. So that's in our request every year. We, we don't get additional support from city employees in terms of cleanup. We we do that all on our own. Um, I think we, we should be able to be able to for a box of trash bags. Yeah, we didn't know that. Like when you live for me, this is what I'm going to need. Because tiny projects, tiny projects, you have to do it for something that other people. I don't know the cost of trash bags because I think that you guys can completely directly order and I've never provided a reason for your cost. So I can't in our contract if it's not given to me to begin with. It, up to this point, it, it's been handled in your uh, in your right. That's yes. I, I guess based on whenever the new one comes out, it will circulate each one. Each time contributes to the Thank you. 
Hello, Evelyn O'Keefe with the EDC. I have my executive board here with me as well. Uh, Roby is, is handing out um, a balance sheet for your records. Uh, first, I would like to start off by giving our new commission, city manager and finance director, director and the lead ordinance, as they were not here when it first was happened. Um, the sheet sheets that you have in front of you. Uh, we keep track of our, of our funds, inception, and the records show that uh, we should have $1.9 million for the PD duck, the $750,000 that is for big dog industries. We should have approximately that one, one $1.9 million. Um, in 2010, we voted one eighth of 1% to be added into our local taxes. Um, one eighth collected was to be put into as a separate fund um, that used for infrastructure and economic development. Um, since it was an enacted, active, um, the fund has collected over $5 million. Um, we have injected $3.5 million back into the community. Some examples, um, 450000 was used for housing incentives. This was for, for practice for utility extensions for new homes. Uh, with this, with this $400,000, uh, we were able to, to get a community apartment complex and 117 new, new homes added to Love Center. Um, the lead theater was purchased with the lead of fund. Um, we did have 150,000 towards for the building. Uh, we incentivized Drayland with $80,000 for drilling equipment. Um, the Chachiski's plant purchase with the, with the intent of finding the tenant for it. Um, um, some infrastructure projects um, are the central plaza phase one. Uh, water line line replacement on Main Street. Uh, we did a utility uh, uh, water line for y'all when they did the new construction. Um, we installed utilities at the north end of town where the new apartment complex is, is. And now we have uh, uh, two projects for that right now. Um, we also did parking upgrades for the judicial complex. Uh, we, we have awarded $150,000 in sod and infrastructure improvements over the last three years. Um, where we where we the local businesses located the upgrade their business they need HVACs, the lights, handicaps accessible, um, windows, doors, roof that, that goes towards that. It is a matching grant. Um, as we move into this new fiscal year, uh, uh, we have nine active projects. As we see, many of these these projects are on the, are on the top of what community needs needs. Uh, these, these new projects are new projects that will be a new build for, for Lovington. Um, so some of these projects will help stop the huge leakage of dollars that we, we currently have now. Um, we have applied funding to the state to for $25,000 upgrade the industrial park. As we all know, we, we have, have about a thousand left over after the lease of, of the solar project, and we are, we are going to lease out areas like, like where legendary services is the key yard there are areas right next to it in an implant that's in the dip but it is the flood flood zone so we apply for funding at the level for twenty five thousand dollars to raise that pretty about three to four feet that can be level so where we are able to to those out to some companies i mean we are working to at, at the moment that are nice. it's just we have nowhere for to be located, located and it would be a primary location for so we are when this we get location of what we were awarded we definitely would let, let you know um solar project they were here two weeks ago ago um they did come come down low and they, they bring down the the folks that are going to be funding the project project just to make you aware it is this is a 330 million dollar solar farm we will, we will be the large solar farm in, in new mexico and, and we've already gotten the okay to move forward um Last month, uh, I attended a retail show in Las Vegas and then met with 18 companies while there. Three of those are franchise companies and they are approved for the Loving Center. Uh, we're looking, they have um, chosen the site and we are currently working and negotiating the sale of properties. Um, I just returned a few days ago to Canada uh, where I attended the, the largest oil and gas show. I was invited by Mexico to represent the Permian Basin. Um, we met with six, six companies and that are that are looking at New Mexico at this time. In about a week, I will be traveling to Washington D.C. Again, I will be going with the state of New Mexico. 
Uh, we have meetings set up, set up with different dates in country countries. Uh, these trade shows, the sales missions, as you know, they help us, they give us the ability to recruit retail, manufacturing, warehousing, distribution of our area um, in terms of creating new job, jobs, build vacant buildings, and most importantly, increase our GRTs. Um, uh, all the tra traveling that I do, all the trade shows that I attend, is all paid, paid for by New Mexico. Um, I do receive a, a grant for twelve thousand five hundred that, that helps that pays for all, for all my travel. None of it comes out of our own. It's a grant that I receive. Um, um, as of now, been on the stand. Stand is our budget. Um, we don't know if we're, we're even able to incentivize any of the projects. We're waiting on the city to validate our numbers on our lead of fund um, um, or just ask, ask what direct direction we take. Uh, we are kind of like on hold. Like I said, we have, we have nine uh, viable projects that are going down. Like I said, we've got about a negotiating treating properties to speak. But we don't know, know if we're able to incentivize any of these projects due to um, not the unknown of our. But, uh, um, any qu questions for me? Um, just would love to need to see if other directors are want to be, you know, a great community partner and want to help the city move forward. We really do. Any questions for us or my executive board, Linda here? Um, I'm here and then all of my board. I have two questions. On the $750,000 big dog who who killed project? Well, um, well, it was it was it was it was hard. It was not very good communication. Um, we technically would pry and pry and pry to get a phone call. We would get the run around around. Yes, we're on this this day we to deposit the, the money. Uh, we actually still have their earnest money tied up at at the time money that was, was never returned to them. So we do have some earnest money that they never got back. Um, but, it, but it's just they never get their funding in fact we've had met we've met with three investors they, they brought three inches down to town and everyone has si signed an intent to purchase it's just for one, one thing or another that they they followed through they were never able to come up with the money they had the money prior to COVID hitting but once COVID hit their investors just like everyone else businesses kind of everybody became frugal with their, their money and, and want to hold off, hold off on making big purchases. That's a question on the incentive. I uh, understand that you have nine, nine costs way, waiting, but how about, how about the previous incentive say if we, we gave all the other five that they even intend to develop, like uh, the turbo still, I mean, I'm still idle, the construction, the construction, the construction the north side of so I don't know. And you're at new plant for the harsh on Main Street. But I'm just saying, look at the brand is it's going to develop. Yeah. What you have to have to take into consideration is that when they per purchased that property, they're, they're going to leak under that, that property for over 20 years. And the state of New Mexico has required for them, for them to do environmental assessments for a period of six to eight months to make sure that the leak is not spread for right. it. That's the reason why, why they haven't been able to start. But, but they moving forward. We have got confirmation. We have met with them, and that and that is truthfully the whole <coughs> should have happened at the beginning of the year, but it has it has happened to the environment. And the reason my question is just because I look at it, look at the couple of projects, not not projects that um, you know three or four years it's not in the let's put it on paper. That if we do incentives, it's an incentive for production all, all year or. Two years out, uh, like you have a lot of projects that are such a high level. So I'm going to jump in because I probably know a little bit more than Evelyn Lennon on that project. You're referring to Norton. So it was phased out and it was, it was felt for city funding. So there was nobody going to jump in, build something, have something ready without the utilities being there. So correct me if I'm wrong, wrong. March of this year, we finally got up in light that those utilities were complete in a pri private meeting with the mayor here um we were asked to, asked to kind of to break some, some stuff because there were, were some engineering going on maybe capacities of sewer water and i'm sorry it was with the city manager manager well, that there was sewer water so we may follow there we're trying to figure that out before we move forward so 
I do realize, or we do realize that the city has provided funding for Project X like that, uh, um, but we weren't the ones holding it up. I mean, it took the city two years to put it in since 2020. So yeah, so so two years to get it phased out and complete. So until all those are ready, you can't really market them. You know what I'm saying? You can't. I mean, there I've seen plans for construction on every on every one of those sites. Um, from retail to, to hotels to car washes to gym loop to everything. But and what I don't get juniors, I don't want us to invest somebody's free and enhancing their their value off our our dime and nothing happens. That's that's what I'll worry about. That, that was a partnership ship. You paid for. I just want to say, just to take note of that, I got your 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 details on 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 every project, not any that you don't. I just don't want us just to enhance people's project uh, properties. Uh, their value go up, and you know, they sit on it on it, and they don't do nothing. They 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 turn around and sell property, and they earn our money. I don't no, know how that. Yeah, works. we we keep that that so that that's uh, part of our duty. Due diligence, right? Right. Those are what board meetings are about. I, I think we've done a job. We, we've we've uh, <coughs> brought in about a million dollars. We're still on paper, holding on to about 1.9. Uh, um, I think it's an excellent job. Um, we have a, a very track record of what what expenses is brought to this. This can be 117 new homes alone is is a big in, impact, right? That's what brought that on the graph seen earlier. It's what's what the Population from nine to eleven. You no, know, that was a big part of it. Um, so no, we we are we're very we you know, we spend that money like it's ours, and and so so we're not responsible of it, or we're not taking anything for granted. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, did, did we read the document that the last time? Just there being certain taking up a little bit. So um, the last time we met where I worked at Purdy Job was in January. We have made several to call. We've actually called, uh, which is Brian. We've we've, we've called the, um, Kathy. She's from California. Brian's from Colorado. Um, Kathy's mother passed away. She decided she was no longer going to be a part of the project. So Brian, Brian on his own. So, so Brian tried to get, get investor. And every time that we sent them, we had a new, had a new investor. We had a new investor. I think we went through like four or five investors until finally, finally they had it and we're done. The state of New Mexico has been, has been in contact with us, and their truthfully, their advice was was to kind of want, don't let it go, let it go. Just keep trying okay? until they're the ones that finally said, "Pull the plug. It's been too long. Let's go." So that's so that reason why we're, we we cut it off. So that so that business coming coming into London was was brought through through the partnership of New Mexico. Um, so. They they started it. They pitched it to communities. They decided they wanted want it on here. And during pre-COVID, uh, the CEO of Big Dog Industries basically lost lost everything he had in Colorado. So he was seeking uh, investors over and over. And about one day, we we us we were tasked to. Pay, pay potential investors out there to, to, to look at it and, and did until they were there was no end in sight of so we started market marketing in places which you know there there is there's great opportunities we have one one <coughs> uh, semi local business that will have have a couple of us by the first of August so and that will be in business issues. <laughs> and we're actually working, working with state in the middle now. Anything for you? Well, probably a couple months, months ago, I'm going to be sitting at the group here, and I'm going to put a little bit of it inside. Uh, to my knowledge, that no money has been uh, spent on any project that's not part of the ship to get by these and brought, brought to the commission to proceed that uh, is standing idle, uh, other than when you can say they've achieved a plan and 
point of standing I have left. This particular uh, agreement, agreement with the big dog, the EDC, and the city of Wellington took about two years to un unfold and uh, not uh, no one's probably in intention. It was in big dog's uh, hand at the time. They they had several options, they had several proposals. Uh, this group examined each one of them, gave them full latitude to as much as they could. And finally, as far as the division finally makes it, it was, it was being made by them because they never followed through on any one of the proposals. And then finally, we, we sorry, DDC at that point, I wasn't even on mission at that point. Finally, finally said, we give as much as we can, can got you wrong. So, so that's how that, that's how the end, the end of the came about. Uh, that was earlier this year. Uh, since then, then we have marketed it, and we have several people. It's been, we, I am still on the board, board now, as a, no longer as an individual. But uh, we are pursuing this, and so uh, the money that was spent, if you look at the list, a lot of them were city projects that, that the EDCC was asked to contribute. So, uh, my, my final statement on that is uh, a few meetings ago, I'm going to say about three meetings ago, I had Kennedy whenever she felt like we were going to get all of this. And I made a comment and also I made hopefully a promise at this point by January, that, excuse me, by July 1st, we would have all of these uh, funds, we would have the, the, the level of those, uh, hopefully. Come to an agreement that, that is where that we are. And I'm going to ask you, Ms. Hendy, are we still on that timeline? I, I hope I can have it by next week. Okay, so uh, uh, at that time, I'm going to ask you to put breaks on just because until we know we can handle it, we needed to uh, just give us a little bit of time. I'm speaking at the end of this. So we're going to meet me there at the end. We're going to provide, we're going to discuss. With, uh, where we stand, and that will then free you from the force. And Ms. Kennedy, it was a correction date of 2000 that you guys have been sitting on that uh, on the money, but it was April 2020. So 750? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to, we want to be proactive. I mean, we like, like I said, we keep our own track on the monies. I mean, as, as Ms. Kennedy mentioned, there's only plenty so she can go back when we did meet uh, prior. All, all she could track, track was especially in 2015 and, and now. I mean, I've been here since it was enacted. Um, so I saw the expenditures were done prior. So. Oh, and I knew the every group to do that. Because you never know when people are going to leave. I've never asked you. It's your responsibility to someone to do that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Is it something you can go back? Anything further before we move on? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. There's two of the discussion of the professor services agreements for these entities that have been in tonight and are supposed to be used on that. So, Mayor, members of the commission, my, my recommendation would be to find. Uh, Lovington Chamber of Commerce, Lovey Lovington Street, and Lovey EDC see all at uh, 35,000. And then the Lee County Museum at 20,000. That would be my recommendation. Oh, no. The only thing I thought uh, was, I don't remember the concerns. I think it's going to be pretty quick. The ordinance, the board has control of the, of the, that's what I'm saying. If we're going to make certain adjustments, I'm not going to get it. Like I said, I, I, awareness is across the board, board all, all, but I, I think, I think we have to make changes to the ordinance. Ordinance is the board, is the one that oversees the, the district, distribution of the solution. Yeah, that's yes, how the board for that. For EDC, for, for that funding, 
and so that you know, I, I, I did it as to put this on the agenda because I wanted to get a little of how everybody, everybody else. Did. His back with this whole entire thing was when uh, Senator at the time, James Williams, was on the board. Uh, he only had one for 50,000. And then also, the chamber once split away from that one board, I mean, one board thing, Main Street wanted to do their own thing. And there was a, a lot of paper going on, and who, uh, and I agree with it. I mean, I mean, I'll be along with it. There was a lot of paper, and everybody had uh, the city manager at the time said, I'll give you a case. And then after that's that's how that's how that uh, and then we only have like one person doing everything, and there would be a few thousand. Like I said, and then it was split, and then everybody. Had that point going forward and uh, uh COVID <coughs> makes changes board itself made changes 35 high. we can make a recommendation to EDC board to lower their there uh as well uh, but uh, you know they invited to COVID hit EDC state like with 50 they did they didn't say that everybody else so I'm just saying straight to it. You know, I think sometimes uh, uh, if we're cut in one place, we need to cut across the board. Everybody needs to play it. Do they do their fair share? And, and, and so I say, uh, well, I put it on this because I keep hearing it, I keep hearing it. I'm like, man, we need to either make a decision and go with it or make some changes and go with it. And it needs to stop. It needs to stop. The bigger it needs to stop. It, either we do it across the board or, 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 or something. We need to uh, we need to do some some sort of sort of change change the words of the top of our then then took that hat and then this board has to make that decision. Okay, um, uh, and then we have the next one is Jeff Bell. Jeff Bell, 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 Jeff and uh, we made some changes. You can back up and say bye. I guess it is as much as this is possible. Uh, it caused a lot of friction and it needs to be put to rest. That's what we're going to do because uh, <laughs> we're moving when people are moving in good directions. And uh, I think it seems like it's something that's uh, just like we have to plan everything else. We need to change some stuff up as we move forward. But you're like seeing things. <laughs> My question is um, in the past that I know of, uh, city manager has uh, basically come up with the professional service agreement. Is that your intent point? Are you going to present that to the different entities? Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, members of mission, what I, what I did is I looked at the previous contracts with EDC, <coughs> Chamber of Commerce, and Main Street, and basically change, change the dates 2022. Um, what I'd like to do is meet with each organization and finalize. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I know everybody wants to ignite the free to do it. Please understand, this is just a discussion item tonight. And so I, my, my hope is that we deal with this together, together get to you and I would like to be present also that was you and I have talked I'm sorry Dr. Jason I talked quite a bit, a bit about this. We would we would like to meet or we would like to have these ideal discussions and, and I concur. I would really like to all of this, this as soon as we can. And, and I realize there may not uh, everyone wants going to be a complete agreement agreement at least let's let's come in and realize that we're all trying to do the same thing. Sorry to I think you need to get a new or new one into six. If you do that, that, that would help with I understand. our I agreement. That, that's the third half I'm for, uh, for that to be provided. So oh, you want us to provide it? We have it. But you did it with it. I did last a couple meetings as well, but I can get it to you. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify two things. First, we were never a part of what used to be to be the Chamber of Commerce and EDDC, let me take sure that all of you are as their own uh, organization and was never a that. 
Give it to Mari, you are in here. In 2009, nine? they were of it. Yeah, Leticia yeah, was here, and in 2009, when I came in in 2008, I came in and as a manager of all three organizations, exactly. the Street Chamber and EDC. In 2009, everybody displayed, everybody had a yeah. So I have the IRS document from 2008 showing that we, have, we are our own non profit. Yeah. Everybody was their own, but it had one director for all okay. She took care of all three of them, and it was standalone. Okay. But we, right. we all each, yeah, yeah we were we, we were the non profit, and two, um, the majority of everything actually comes from Homogenized and not, not from the budget in itself. So, yes. But it's not part of your operational fund, and it doesn't allow you to do it for Okay, again, I appreciate I understand where each entity is at, and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to work through this out to the best I can do very, very short term. Because it, it, it's time. It's time. We've, we've fought for two years. We have had been on different sides of it. Anyway, let's let's come together and go to the board, and uh, we'll get to the end of this. And we'll be the final rendition will be week before the mission at some in the near future. All contracts. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Mayor, uh, for the new fiscal year to fix and start, are we just going to be tasked with taking care of July first? It's in, in, the it's in the budget. It's in the budget. Yeah. It's going to release the funds. Right, right. So it's in the budget. It's in the budget. Every dollar is budget. One side is No, you don't have to change it. It's one side of the budget doesn't mean that you have to spend the higher amount. So if we budget at 50, that would mean that if, if we spend it, we don't have to spend it. That's what I'm saying. Patrick, do you look like you got something there? <laughs> no, no, I'm fighting back a sneeze and stuff. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, I, I think what to do though is, is, is as the senior said, sit down with some of these entities because I think that we started <laughs> off with the same form of co contract. And one, and we just kind of just kind of fit it up by three that may not fit for, for each one. There may be some changes that we want. There may be some changes that they want. It's a very short, short period of time between now and the start of the year, but I, I think it's something that's doable. And the while here, not trying to think about anything, when I was had a lot of people come at me with it, do we have a conflict of interest because we're doing funds and she's going to I'm sorry. Because I think like four. Yeah, because she's on the board and we funded. Mm -hmm. so, a lot of people. I, you know, I. Normally, when you look at the benefits, I would look at, at an individual that has control over the off, or mm -hmm. what their salary would be, or other things like that. So I don't think there's a um, particular relationship other than husband and wife that would um, be kind of additional control over what what happened that particular entity and what doesn't. I think especially if you an easy way way to do it is. So what you think and just a sustained vote. I don't yeah, think have as far as the yeah. so so yeah. and there's just yeah. like, yeah. and there's you know you know for can I can say about I said on the the damn board or yeah. yeah so there's an issue there there's about the yeah. 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 yeah and it, it, it's it's so it's one of the things that's really really difficult in a small yeah. community because we don't have you know and one of the things <laughs> someone else and also pointed out our election actions we have people just jump in to take those positions yeah. and oftentimes don't have people jumping in in the positions on boards. And so we find ourselves in a situation that um, some, some of those may ha have peers. I think you address them, get them over with out here in an open meeting. That's what the best way to handle it. And if somebody has a problem, my response has always been, well, you can have a lot of free, free time, step up to the plate and see what you're willing to do. And, and that usually, you know, you know stops yeah. that. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. All right. That ends our non action items. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to the action items. The floor now for a motion. I make, I make a motion with, from the resolution 2022 that has 0.5 
I'm Melissa, I'm one of the recruitment officers for the city of Lovington, uh, along with Tracy. Um, on April, April we worked work with RP by city manager Martinez um, to for professional design services on our veterans winter work. On April 14th, we published the RP Office News Services at Lovington Leader, the yeah. Outer Journal, and also our Lovington.org website. We are required to publish it for 10 days. Uh, that put our ending date on April 28th. During the time, we received two awards, one from Hewitt Dollars and one from MMRWM, Landscape Architects. We gave it to, to the evaluation committee made up of one, one city employee and two outside um, sources. Uh, uh, they read the RDRP and scored each one by a certain criteria. Um, they then, then returned to us. <coughs> we tally up the scores and, and um, with the scores for MRWM. MRWM, I'll just say that. Um, landscape Architects won by 62 points. So, so we ask for you to, to award the memorial RRP MRWM Landscape Architects. Any Yeah, can you write? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The only thing is we have to yeah. we're gonna have to mark in. Yeah. Two, two. I can mark in mark it. I'd like to amend my motion to include the uh, award in the benefit to MRWM. MRWM. For our architectural design for the Bedford Memorial Park. Motion to second the amendment. Brings one thing to watch. I just spoke with the, the city manager today. Uh, in lieu of uh, things that have come, come to light that have been an interest over the past week, we were sitting on approximately $3 million in reserve that has taken a significant reserve is this non operation set aside and it's not so my uh, concern is we in the past week have lost half of them another good portion of the re remaining is COVID funds and so if not expended from the previous uh, 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 year and we are still working on uh, the rest of the funds, including the EDC, including the larger center. All of that sets strap. So all of that is commingled and all of it uh, attributed to this three million dollars of non operation. Uh, so my concern was, while this is a my amount to do the architectural services. The total expenditure is uh, the I calculated is about five hundred thousand dollars. That five five hundred something would have to be expended before it's reimbursed. Now, uh, the city manager brought up that there would be a hardship. I know from uh, thinking think about how it's on when capital outlay comes up. So, uh, this appro approval is for the architect, and um, my. I don't know how long it would be before to be able to fund the project to be later, later reimbursed. But if that has any bearing, that's just my discussion in my opinion. Is there any other? Are you suggesting that we table this to a later date? Or are we saying? Yeah, I'm not going to suggest anything, but I, it, it will risk out. Just saying, you know, do you think that, that at some point, point we should go on with this, or do you think this is something we should deal? Yeah. I think we're going to pay for our architectural services that we won't be able to fund for us. So, so I mean, my opinion, we we kill it at this point, and we we look at it later. Maybe. 
that is my opinion. What what is what is what is my standard? What was yeah, it's not in here. So. Yeah. I mean, the point being that everything starts with uh, design. Uh, if you don't have a design in place, how can you just fund all that? That's the thing that we look at. Of course, all of the pieces of property. And, um, you know, if the design is only 30000 let's say it's 60000 um, it's all being reimbursed. Well, the and thing is, then you, have to, you have to design it, and then you don't do anything for three years, and then you go and resign it, redesign it again, and instead of that, a third thousand, it's sixty thousand. But you have a design in place that's how you can these funds. Are and we would we, be reimbursed for the yeah. design. So yeah, that, that's, that's about it. Why? If you, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't do some step one, you're not never going to get the cost of all the money. You're never going to get the cost of all the money. Uh, that's why I say it because we can always ask for uh, not a state of the bed. And it's just it's a real big it's a nationwide project. That, that point. We don't have to do that, but you're not going to be able to take that first step. Uh, we, we need it to uh, echo that to uh, the county itself because it, it, that word is a county board. They've been waiting on this project for many, many years. And uh, we kind of uh,
So, uh, it's just, this is a youth memorial. It's not any other student. We can always go into detail later, but that's just my operation. Ms. Perry, uh, uh, briefly, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 my concern is not whether we build it or not, it is whether we have that cash flow. And so my question to you would be, do you feel that you can raise funds to, to because the one thing about capital action, you will not reimburse until it's completed and accepted. Uh, so. To our check part is No, no, I'm talking about the, the final project. You know, I, I mean, the capital outlay is $500,000. Okay, right now, we don't have cash flow to do that. So even if we can get this design, this architectural design, it, it may sit for a while. Because we, we have, I'm going to be being very honest, we have severe problems that we we not fund as a city, and yet a much higher priority. So whether we approve the architectural or not, that yet yeah, can be uh, can be cut and re reimbursed. There is, a, a, a right now, there is no possible date in the future that I could assure you we will be starting. So, I, I, in order to proceed with the project, you would have to come up with a plan. And I, and I, I just want you to understand. But I think the end of the start to design. Oh. If you've got a line and you completely decide to get rid of it, it doesn't say yeah. the entire project failed. Yeah. It says for purchase of this property or something that and design sign. So once you get it done, you get rid of it first. Right. So it doesn't mean that we have to build this entire project. It takes 10 years to find the money that this particular building capital takes. That's why it's going to take 50,000. You use architectural to get that to get it reimbursed. You, you get reimbursed everything. It's, it's, and I'm, I'm understanding that the second week is day, day is yes. Uh, if we leave the time, then that's completed and then you get reimbursed through. Okay. No argument. That, that's just, just something there because I do understand and I've said this in the audience, but the troubles. And they're, they're huge. And, and uh, We've been doing that for a while. Uh, unfortunately, and um, so willing to do, do what we decide. We're not here to argue about it or anything, anything but to get re reimbursed for what you've already put out, plus what you will be putting out. We need to make some time so that it should become basically cold. That's just, that's all I have. Thank you. Do we have a, uh, do we have a big figure of what we have put out? Uh, uh, okay, all right. No. Do you, you have anything for anyone to add in your, no. what was it called? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Oh, okay. It's not in there. <laughs>